Alright, welcome back everyone. We are checking out the Excalibur 9 today for the 2022 model year. There have some been really been some really cool changes with this one. The Excalibur 9 now has a dropper post and that's something important. It shows where the kind of whole generation of bikes is going. Adding a dropper post to this thing is a big huge step to making it a really capable fun bike but also keeping it true to where it was with the kind of entry level um, race bike which is nice of them to do so this is the top end model in the Excalibur series they don't have a carbon frame option it just sticks with that aluminum one but it is a lightweight aluminum one so it's going to be a relatively lightweight bike you're under 30 pounds which is nice has a RockShox Recon Gold 100 mil suspension fork to it and a Shimano 1x12 drivetrain so this gives a super wide range for us and um, 51 tooth on the back so nice huge gear again a lot of the times i think for experienced people that's almost too kind of small or too big too low of a range i don't think you'll really need it that often but for the newer riders it's nice that it's there so like i said this is the aluminum frame it is at alpha gold so it is the highest level of aluminum they make the tapered head tube on that frame makes it more upgradable as well allows a bit more precise and confident handling in that front end um, with a boost 141 rear hub so that's really nice with this new year model they have shortened up those chain stays again i mean it's it's a growing trend that everyone wants to do the shorter the chain stays the smaller that back end is the more nimble agile will be on handling which is just a really nice thing to have you can't be there is no downside to having a, a more agile bike honestly with the frame they have stuck to that same smart wheel size they keep true to so on the two smaller sizes they go in with the 27 and a half but everything else is 29 it is the fastest rolling tire and that's where they're going for it Obviously, the frameway is all internal cable routing, as with pretty much all Trek models now. They have really nailed that kind of clean internal routing. It looks really nice. It offers a small amount more protection, um, but for the most part, it's just about looks. It's super nice. Until you need to replace a cable, it's, there's no downside to it. Replacing a cable does become a little bit more work. It is nice as well with that internal cabling is included, that internally uh routed dropper post so that's something new this year to have that drop post on it it's a big savings to to not need to buy essentially does still have kickstands and rear rack mounts so if you are looking for a really fast commuter this could be an option for you obviously the majority of people will be buying this for kind of cross-country trail but that doesn't mean everyone has to pick it it is going to be a lighter faster cruising um, commuter which could do some kind of gravel riding too as your all-purpose bike Sneaky. so the RockShox Recon on the front there it is the gold RL and it does have the debonair spring in it so it is a little bit more adjustable um, based off your weight which is nice it's a hundred mil travel and it does have the 15 mil axle on it which is a nice addition and boost 110 so both front and rear are the maxle which is cool um, it's going to make it a little bit more stiff, more controllable through it. Um, and as well, it just makes for a cleaner assembly and disassembly if you're ever taking the wheels off for traveling, if you're racing or something like that. Through axle is just really nice. It just it works well. There's no springs or anything like that, like the standard old QR 5 mil setup. It just works really, really well. The rims with this one as well, so the XCAL 9 this year has big improvements. Like you get in a double walled Covey rim, it is tubeless ready. It does come tubeless as well, which is a big savings. Again, something most shops will charge to install, plus you need to buy the fluid, plus you need to buy additional parts like the valves. This is nice, it just comes all set up right out of the box. They'll build it, they'll set it up. Has that Maxis Ardent race on it. Obviously right now with a part shortage, we have seen things interchange so you might get an XR2 or potentially something from Kenda or maybe a little more aggressive bike but it, it's nothing too crazy different with the 2.35 on it so as with everything it's getting beefier and beefier more heavy duty and um, there's less downside to a bigger tire than they thought everyone used to think it was speed like would be drastically hit but I say a 2.35 rolls fast you can drop the PSI way down with it and have a little more consistent control with it and a little more durability with it. It has that exo casing on it. 
So you're able to take this a lot more aggressive terrain than it ever was able to go before, which is where people are going. And, you know, it's more that down country touch to it, which you can always change to a really fast rolling one and lose that traction. But a lot of the homemade trails now, they're a bit more down country designed. Onto the shifting, like I said, it's at 12 speed with the 51 on the back. It is a mix of the XT and SLX. Again, there's a bit of confusion as to what's the big difference between SLX and XT. Honestly, there's not much. The SLX is still gonna shift superbly well. That is the shifting unit, and then the Ready Relay is an XT. So if you ever wanted, you could easily upgrade the front shifter to an XT one, and you'll have a slightly faster one. But more importantly, a little bit lighter weight. I don't think many people would ever do that, but it's a good option to go to. The front chain ring, surprisingly, is a 30 tooth. Surprised they didn't put like a 32 on this one. The disc brakes are honestly shockingly good. So this comes with the MT4100. So this is, like honestly, they've got a lot of bite to them, a lot of power to them. Shimano, so it's very on off, very touchy which a lot of people like. It gives like an instant feedback to it compared to SRAM, which is a little softer, a little slower. This one will just react superbly well with 180 mil and 160 mil brake rotors on them. So you can have a lot of stopping power behind this. This is actually gonna, when you want it to stop, it's gonna stop really, really well. Still has a 31.8 stem to it. So you're not gonna get that big 35 mil handlebar, but it's still a big size. It's still going to have a lot of stiffness and control to it. And honestly, again, for most people, I don't know if it's going to make a huge difference. Like I said, the weight is under that 30 pound mark. So without pedals, you're probably looking around the 27 and a half pound mark or 12.5 um, kilograms. So it's going to be really a lightweight bike right out of the box. Obviously, if you put a few carbon parts like bars or something like that, it's going to really shave it down. And remember, this is also with a dropper post. So 27 pounds with a dropper post is pretty impressive. If you had a really big hilly course, you could really shave off like another pound by just getting rid of that dropper post where you might not need it as much. The Excalibur really is designed to be a fast rolling kind of classic cross country hardtail. It's going to be really quick handling and a lightweight bike, you know, obviously it's not in that 20 pound mark for the price it is, which, you know, yes, you're well under the $3,000 mark, but it's well over the $2,000 mark in Canadian dollars. It's a, it is a race bike. It has got the high end power spec to it. The hundred mil travel is still appealing and that cut in weight is still going to be appealing to a lot of people who just want to get out there and get some kind of fast lap times in the Strava KOMs, such like that. Like it's gonna be a really good bike for anyone who is trying to attack those goals without spending, you know, $4,000 for a really high end hardtail carbon bike. That being said as well, with the higher end part spec, as well as having all the rack mounts, it does make for a really capable commuter or adventure bike, you know, you're still in a relatively comfortable position. The dropper post now means no matter what terrain you come across, you're gonna be able to take it. Having rack mounts means you're gonna be able to load it up really well. So this can also be thought of as like a, a heavy duty checkpoint gravel bike. You know, if you put on a slightly slimmer tire or even just stuck with what was on it, you're still gonna roll fast. You've got a huge weight savings compared to a full suspension or something like the Roscoe. This is gonna cruise on gravel significantly faster. And um, when you come across these faster path trails and stuff, it's actually gonna dominate on that really well. So you've gotta remember that is an option for it. If you wanna put out some big kilometers and shortcut through the trails, this is gonna be a lot more capable than a checkpoint. You know, The checkpoint's gonna be really difficult to handle in the off-road sense of things. So the Excalibur can be a really capable bike. And I think that's why they keep it in that name of Excalibur, the kind of the one to rule it all kind of idea. It can do anything. It can do a bit of downhill. It can be aggressive, but it can also be a really capable bike loading it up or just simply commuting. You'll be able to rip around town with this shortcut anywhere and not have a worry about it. And that drop post is just gonna be a nice little addition to it. So yeah, the geometry is actually the exact same as previous model years. They haven't changed anything there. So it's gonna still be that fairly progressive geometry, but 
cross country racing spa it's so fast flowing a little bit more aggressive obviously a lot more aggressive than the roscoe's couple interesting things um the max tire size it comes stock with 2.35 on, on a 29 but it can fit up to a 2.4 now the small and extra small frames you can actually fit all the way up to a 27 and a half and 2.8 inch wide tire which is really interesting like that's a plus size now you're essentially building a really high-end roscoe again with less travel like it's really interesting small and extra small frames are not compatible with 29s but the medium and larger frames you could switch out to a 120 mil fork and you can actually fit a 27 and a half inch plus tire and wheel on that super weird super interesting um if you put a regular 27 and a half on the regular fork it'll the bottom bracket will be way too low you'll get a lot of pedal strikes it'll be crazy terrible but the fact that you could put a bigger fork on there and go to 27 plus is kind of intriguing like you could make what was the trek roscoe so a little bit more cross-country inspired, but a little bit more fun and playful. You can fit a 32 tooth chain ring on the front as well. Um, so it will be a little bit faster on the faster kind of rolling sections. And then, yeah, there is no women's size in this one. It just goes to the main kind of men's size or main line size, as they call it. And they just have a couple extra colors throughout the entire line, which this one only comes in one, which is a little disappointing, but I, I don't think it's going to be a huge, huge seller. It's a pretty small market now. All right, so the Excalibur 9. This is the 2022 model. Hopefully this uh, kind of breaks down what it's for and who it's for. Uh, keep an eye out for more videos. Hope you enjoyed the ride and good luck, guys. Thank you very much.